Hey everyone, Chad with Data Prep U here. Today we're going to take a look at desktop automation in Alteryx, otherwise known as scheduling. Let's go. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the Alteryx favorites workflow that we featured a little while back. Now what this does is this takes a couple of different data sources, builds up a preparation process, joins the three different data sources together, ultimately to end in the output of that data as one single source. Now, let's say I wanted to take this a step further and I wanted to put this on some sort of regular recurrence or, or regular cadence. Well, if you have that desktop automation package, all you have to do is click options and then schedule workflow. Now, from here, I only see one option and that's to schedule to my computer. There are actually two separate options for scheduling, one of which is this desktop automation that we're talking about right now. The other is actually using the Alteryx server. Now we'll tackle that in a different uh, video, so stay tuned for that. So in this case, we only have the one option because I've set my instance up to only have the desktop automation package. So when I go into click uh, on the my computer option, the desktop option, what happens is I'm actually brought or I'm, I'm, I'm shown the scheduling interface. Now, this has only a few options. It's relatively straightforward. Uh, one of which is the actual frequency on the left hand side. So with that frequency, you can schedule based off of, you know, every minute, every hour, every couple of seconds, uh, every specific day, or even go through and say, I need to do the first, second, third, fourth day of the week or the first Sunday of every month and so on and so forth. Now, the other side of things actually has two separate options. Now, one of which says run a copy of this workflow stored in the scheduler database. And the other one says to run the workflow from its original location on the disk. Now, it's very important to understand what each of these are because it's going, what you do is going to be dependent on the actual way you're going to consume that data and manage the workflow. So the first option, run a copy of the workflow stored in the scheduler database. I typically equate this to more of a production environment. So let's say you wanted to build out this process, build out this schedule, and you wanted it to be pretty locked down. Well, what happens is Alteryx will actually capture that workflow it zips everything up and it saves it to this scheduler database. Now, if you do want to make an update to that, you can, but you have to take a few additional steps. On the flip side, if you actually run this workflow from its original location on the hard drive or on the disk, what happens is every time you open up that workflow from that, let's say it's you have a folder called C colon backslash Alteryx workflows, if you open up that workflow and make a change and save it, the next time the scheduler runs, it pulls that those changes at runtime and then actually runs the workflow. Now, that can be good and that can be bad. It's fewer steps to update the workflow. However, if there's some sort of a issue with the workflow, you may not necessarily know until after the workflow actually runs. So if you have other people that are dependent on the workflow, it might be a good idea to actually package this up and store it in a scheduler database. So that way it kind of forces you to take that extra step uh, and make sure that the workflow runs properly. Now, let's say you schedule this workflow. We're gonna schedule this once at, uh, let's say 10.04 a.m. and then click OK. Now what happens is the scheduler has actually captured this workflow. If I want to take a look at the results of that, all I have to do is go back into options and then view schedules. What happens is this brings up all of the different workflows that have actually been scheduled onto my local machine through desktop automation. Now I can add additional workflows by clicking on the plus sign here. I can even go in and see the actual schedules that have actually been run. I can see I've got a couple of completed schedules. I've got one that's it's actually active and it's only set to run one single time. If anything is currently running, it will actually show up in the queue here, which is really nice. So it's important to pay attention to the queue because if you have a lot of schedules running, you'll start to see these workflows queue up. And that might be an indication of maybe I need to upgrade my machine, add some more memory, or maybe I need to start taking a look at the Alteryx server as well, just to handle the size of workload that we're actually pushing to this scheduler. Now, finally, you have the results window here. Now, 
you can see we've got a couple of different options, one of which you can actually just open up the tools themselves. I've got two different examples, one that fails and one that succeeds. The actual results window at the bottom does get stored in the scheduler. So this is really handy to go in and take a look at your scheduled workflows, see what those results were, and even click on the output to see what that output is. So in this case, I'm actually gonna click on the one that failed here. And I wanna actually bring up what happened. In this case, it says a file wasn't found. So something changed with my input file here. So now I can go back, I can take a look at what file was actually, or what, uh, what what file it was actually trying to read in, and then I can make those changes to that workflow. So that was desktop automation. Once again, this is Chad with Data Prep U. Thanks for watching. Hey folks, if you like what you saw, please give us a thumbs up and click subscribe. Those two actions help us tremendously. If you also have any additional questions, please feel free to post them in the comments down below. If you don't have Alteryx yet, please check out the link below for a free two-week trial directly through Alteryx. Thanks again.